Amanita muscaria, the fly agaric. It's likely the most iconic mushroom of all time. For example, type mushroom into your iPhone and the emoji that comes up is a representation of Amanita muscaria, the red one with the white dots. But strangely enough, even though it has cemented its place in our collective mushroom consciousness, we still don't really know much about it. The vast majority of mushroom books will tell you it's poisonous, but is it? Others consider it a magic mushroom, yet it contains no psilocybin. There is so much to discover about this mushroom, but in this video, I wanted to focus on a compelling potential as a functional mushroom and whether or not it can be useful for sleep. Okay, so it is 9.36 p.m. exactly, and uh, this is the first night of trying Amanita muscaria for sleep. So I've got my Fitbit, which will be tracking my sleep, even though it doesn't track it perfectly. We'll at least get some data. And I've got an Amanita muscaria tincture. 20 grams of dried Brazilian AAA grade Amanita muscaria caps per 60 mil bottle. So I guess there's 333 milligrams of muscaria per dropper. It's a super low dose, so I'm not gonna be like feeling any psychoactive effects from the mushroom. But in general, this mushroom is used for relaxation and sleep at low doses. So we'll see what kind of an effect it has. Saying Amanita is useful for sleep can be interpreted a few different ways. Because some Amanitas are deadly. Eating enough of them, specifically Amanita phylloides, also known as the death cap, could induce a permanent sleep. Some Amanitas will do neither, such as Amanita caesarea, which is just a good edible. Amanita muscaria is in a league of its own. It seems to blur the boundaries between edible, poisonous, and psychoactive depending on a number of factors. It grows in a symbiotic relationship with other trees, and because of its complex life cycle, it can't easily be cultivated, so it needs to be wild harvested. This can have a number of implications when it comes to its use as a functional mushroom, because it becomes harder to know exactly what the chemical makeup is, depending on where it comes from, what stage of growth it was when it was harvested, and perhaps most importantly, how it was prepared. So it is 1026. Yeah, so it's been just over 45 minutes or so since I took the tincture and I do feel pretty tired. Like my eyelids feel heavy and my, my eye muscles feel heavy and I feel pretty sleepy. Sleep, sleepy. <laughs> I definitely feel something. Um, I feel very relaxed and very sleepy. How about you? I'm pretty tired too, but I did not have any, so. <laughs> okay. Well, there goes that. Using Amanita for therapy or altered states is nothing new. Historically, it was used by shamans in various rituals and ceremonies where it was believed to produce a trance-like state that helped connect the shaman to the spirit realm. Interestingly, Amanita has also been used as a stimulant. So what is really going on here? Well, it comes down to the compounds that are in the mushroom. There are two that are mostly thought to be responsible for the psychoactive effects and the potential other therapeutic benefits of this mushroom, ibotenic acid and muscimol. Both of these compounds resemble others that are naturally found in our brain chemistry and thus can interact with certain neural pathways in the brain. Ibotenic acid is thought to be stimulating. Here's how that might work. It's similar to natural chemical in the brain called glutamate, which activates nerve cells in the brain. When ibotenic acid is consumed, it binds to the same receptors in the brain as glutamate and mimics its effects. This leads to an increase in the activity of nerve cells in the brain, causing a range of effects such as stimulation, excitement, and maybe even euphoria and hallucinations. Muscimol has the opposite effect. Here's how it works. Muscimol is similar in structure to a natural chemical in the brain called GABA. GABA is a neurotransmitter that helps to calm down the activity of nerve cells in the brain. When muscimol is consumed, it binds to the same receptors in the brain as GABA and amplifies its effects. This leads to a decrease in overall brain activity, causing a range of effects such as drowsiness and overall relaxation, which could lead to sleep. Keep in mind, again, dose is super important. At high doses, muscimol can cause hallucinations and even unconsciousness. A little bit more chemistry here, it's important to note that ibotenic acid is converted into muscimol through a process known as decarboxylation, which can be achieved through heating or drying of the mushroom. In other words, a thoroughly dried Amanita muscaria will have much of its ibotenic acid converted into muscimol. Good morning. My hair's a little crazy. So, tracking my sleep. I guess I had a pretty good sleep, but not great. Like not amazing, not noticeably good. Um, and even if I look at the tracking on the Fitbit, 
it was just kind of fair. It did take me a little bit longer to fall asleep than usual, which is weird because I was super sleepy and super tired. Didn't have any crazy dreams or anything like that, but woke up feeling pretty good. It's just one night and you can't obviously come to any conclusions from one night, so I'm gonna try it again tonight and probably again tomorrow and at least track it for a couple days and see if there is any impact of the Amanita for sleep. But again, for sure, like I felt sleepy last night after the Amanita. I don't think that was just placebo. I felt super tired. So I'm gonna see if that happens again tonight. We'll see with this very unscientific anecdotal experiment if Amanita muscaria does in fact have a positive impact on sleep, falling asleep faster, sleep quality, all that good stuff. In Kevin Feeney's book, Fly Agaric, a Compendium of History, Pharmacology, Mythology, and Exploration, which is a great resource for anyone who's looking to understand this mushroom, there is a survey which includes anecdotal reports from 30 people, and many of them do attest to using this mushroom as a sleep aid. It's just a self-reported survey, not a full-on scientific study, but there is some interesting data. For example, one person reported, in small doses of chewed and swallowed dried caps, I was able to fall asleep faster and stay asleep longer. It increases my sleep pattern from the typical four to six hours to a full seven to nine hours of what I consider to be a good sleep. The same subject also reported that use of fly agaric has allowed me to avoid over-the-counter sleep aid and helped to limit my alcohol consumption. Kevin also notes though, based on traditional use of the fly agaric in Siberia to treat insomnia, I was somewhat surprised that the results here were not stronger. I guess this survey just underscores how little is still known about the potential therapeutic effects of this mushroom. All right, so it is 9.46. This is the second night of trying the Amanita muscaria tincture. One thing I did want to mention though, on the bottle it says full spectrum muscaria extract with high muscimol from decarboxylation, leaving low ibotenic acid. So again, muscimol and ibotenic acid, these are the two compounds inside of this mushroom that might have effects. And it's muscimol that is thought to be responsible for the relaxing and the sleep inducing effects. So this decarboxylation method, which increases the, uh, the content of muscimol, would potentially improve the relaxing or sleep inducing properties of this extract. So what would be really cool, and I'm sure if you know, this becomes somewhat of a functional mushroom and you start to see it everywhere, you're gonna see those levels of muscimol that are being tested for and that's what you might want to look for if you're using it for this purpose. But again, this is super unscientific. This is just me trying a, a random extract. I have no idea how much muscimol is actually in there, but apparently it's gone through a decarboxylation process in order to increase that content of muscimol. So are there any safety concerns with this mushroom? If you consulted your field guide, you might find that it's listed as poisonous. And although you could argue that it's true, depending on your definition of poisonous, the reality is a little more nuanced. A review of 30 years of mushroom poisonings based on 2,000 reports in the North American Mycological Society case registry shows about 100 cases of poisonings from Amanita muscaria, but only one recorded death, which was not even a direct result of the mushroom. It does note, however, some other symptoms, some not a big deal, like gastrointestinal distress or visual disturbances, something pretty common with any psychoactive, but also people have mentioned things like sweating, muscle spasms and convulsions, atrial fibrillation or rapid heart rate, and others. It also mentions deaths, but only in cats and dogs, so it's possible that animals have a lower tolerance to the compounds in this mushroom. I should also mention that one of the main compounds in Amanita muscaria, ibotenic acid, is often used in animal studies as a brain lesioning agent. Definitely not something that you would want. The thing to keep in mind though is that in these studies, high doses of ibotenic acid are injected directly into the brain. Not only that, but there is no proof that ibotenic acid can even get to the brain through digestion, with some suggesting that it breaks down in the stomach. If you want an entertaining read on this topic, there is a great article that Hamilton Morris did for Harper's Magazine where he thought he was testing a muscimol derivative for sleep, but then he found out it was actually ibotenic acid. What follows is an understandable concern for his brain. I'll link that in the description. Brain lesioning obviously is not something anyone would want, so it makes sense to be cautious here. The bottom line is that we really still don't know, so in that case I need to put a warning here. Do not eat this mushroom. Not only could it be potentially poisonous depending on how it's prepared, 
Identifying mushrooms, especially those in the Amanita genus, can be tricky. And as mentioned earlier, there are deadly mushrooms in this genus. The fact that it is being researched for some medical applications today, and that it does have a history of use, doesn't necessarily mean that it's safe. So it has been about 45 minutes. I feel unusually tired for this time of night. I mentioned it yesterday, but very distinctly, like there's a heaviness kind of around my eye muscles and I just feel a little bit sleepy, a little bit slower. We'll see if this has any effect on the actual sleep, because last night it didn't seem to, even though I felt really sleepy. But I think it's important to remember all the other things that we do that could have an effect on sleep. You know, if I was to spend the last half an hour working out, or like, I don't know, getting a lot of blue light in my eyes from watching TV or being at the computer or something, versus going in the sauna and reading a book, you know, even without adding the Amanita muscaria, those two different bedtime routines could have a massive effect. Most of the research so far has been done on rodents, which although it can show some promising results, is not directly able to be correlated to what effect it might have on humans. Here are some of the studies. One study conducted on mice found that administration of muscimol resulted in a significant increase in slow wave sleep, which is a deep sleep stage associated with memory consolidation and rejuvenation. Another study found that muscimol can have an effect on sleep time in alcohol-dependent rats, decreasing the periods of active wakefulness and increasing the percentage of rapid eye movement sleep. But there is one company in Canada that is starting to look at research on humans using their own extract of Amanita muscaria called AME one. They did a 90-day toxicity study on animals and found no observed adverse effect level, meaning they found no adverse events from administrating their extract. But from what I could find, there was no indication of what they tested that level up to. They also declared grass status, meaning generally regarded as safe, opening up the potential for them to start selling a tincture in the US. In 2022, Canada actually designated Amanita muscaria as a natural health product technically clearing the way for potentially having this mushroom to be sold in product form, but as far as I can tell, no products have actually received approval. Overall, the landscape for this mushroom is still a little bit muddy. I have seen products being sold in the US. When I was at Wonderland in Miami, for example, there was a company selling Amanita muscaria gummies. I have seen recent press releases of companies now selling Amanita gummies online. There was another store in Florida that got a lot of press coverage for selling Amanita muscaria. They kind of billed themselves as the first legal magic mushroom dispensary, but it did eventually get a visit from the Department of Agriculture and they had to stop selling the mushroom. Still, we're likely going to continue seeing more and more of these products on the market as it all gets figured out. I think before Amanita muscaria really takes the main stage as a therapeutic or functional mushroom, there will need to be some clarity on the legal status. Depending on where you live, it's not all that clear. For example, in Canada, it's a natural health product. In Australia, muscimol is considered to be a Schedule 9 drug, which is the same schedule as LSD, DMT, psilocybin, cannabis, and others. In the US, it seems to be legal with one exception being Louisiana, where State Act 59 took some broad strokes to outlaw any type of cultivation, possession, or sale of 40 different hallucinogenic plants. Everywhere else, it seems to be more ambiguous. Historically, it has been sold not for human consumption, which always seemed a little goofy to me. Today, the main problem I see with marketing and selling Amanita is conflating it with psilocybin mushrooms. I have seen a lot of marketing selling Amanita muscaria as legal magic mushrooms, of course with magic mushrooms being the term that people often associate with psilocybin containing mushrooms. It's just a little insincere and might cause confusion. These two mushrooms, psilocybe mushrooms that contain psilocybin and amanita mushrooms that contain muscimol are two completely different things and should be thought of in completely different ways. The most important thing, as always, is education. As we learn more about this mushroom, the more educated everyone can become and the more people can make their own informed decisions. Okay, so that's three nights now that I've used the Amanita. And again, last night uh, I felt pretty sleepy after the Amanita tincture, but I really don't think it had any effect on my sleep. I don't actually felt like I slept good at all. Uh, it looks like I was awake a lot, kind of restless. So again, it's really hard to say. I don't know, like I'm sure Amanita muscaria helps with maybe making people feel calm or sleepiness, but I think at the end of the day, there's way too many factors that play into sleep. And there's so many other things that are just as important, if not maybe even more important. 
such as your stress levels and how much caffeine you had during the day and how much sunlight and all this other stuff. So like anything else in life, human physiology is complicated and what causes you to have a good sleep, there's a lot of different factors to it. And I'm not sure adding one of them, like Amanita, uh, is gonna have a major effect. Now, this, of course, can vary. I mean, maybe I didn't have enough dose. Maybe the extract didn't have enough muscimol. I think there's enough history and enough science behind it to make it a reasonable thing to investigate. And I think maybe other people obviously do have luck with it and maybe it is worth it. But I just, you know, anecdotally, this particular tincture uh, is not really doing it for me for sleep but I still think this mushroom has a lot of potential for to be used as a functional mushroom for that purpose.